Hi, this is Mr. Manley. On this video, I am going to review quadratics for a student who is already very familiar with quadratics from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. There are two forms of a quadratic in an equation that we have worked with or that you have most likely worked with in the past. This form here and this form here. We want to look at working with both of these today. And there's a variety of questions that could be asked that involve quadratics, anywhere from a given equation to a word problem and various different questions in between. And what I want to look at here is the, these aspects that, and I'm, and I'm saying that if, if, you, if you know how to find the vertex, if you know how to find the x-intercept, the zeros, the axis of symmetry, you can adjust to any situation and answer any question that is asked if you know how to apply the information. So we'll start off with the vertex. And there are two things, uh, two ways of finding the vertex. One is to find the vertex by using negative b over 2a. And you might recognize that as a piece of the quadratic formula. So you might know the quadratic formula better here. And then just notice that this little piece of it, negative b over 2a, that is what is going to give us the vertex of a quadratic. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Or it's at least going to get us the x-coordinate of the vertex. So. Here we have a, a quadratic and say so we want to know what is the vertex of this quadratic function. And I'm going to use this notation here, x, c, v for x coordinate of the vertex. And we'll go negative b, so that's the opposite of negative 12, that's negative b. Of course, uh, we know this is a, this is b, this is c and then over 2a, so 2 times negative 3, and I get 12 over negative 6, which is negative 2. So it's a negative b over 2a, and that is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then we would go for the y-coordinate of the vertex by plugging this value in for all the values of x, or for all the variable, the variables of x. So let's do that. Negative 3, negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 minus 6, and we'll evaluate that. And we get 6. So the vertex of this parabola is negative 2 6. Okay, what are some other things that we would like to know about this quadratic? How about the x-intercepts? Or maybe we should uh, actually move down to the, the axis of symmetry. So let's say we could kind of keep track here. We've done that. And then let's go down here to the axis of symmetry, because that's pretty simple, right? The axis of symmetry is always the x-coordinate of the vertex. Simple enough. Whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is, that's what the axis of symmetry is. So in this case, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. All right, what else? How about the x-intercepts? They were asked for the x-intercept. Now, something I want you to know about the x-intercept here is that th these are all pretty well synonymous. x-intercept, zeros, roots, factors are all really getting us to the same place. It's just a different context in which these are being referred to, but the process or what we're doing to answer the question about the x-intercept or the roots or the, the uh, factors is all going to be the same. It actually is, begins with factoring, so we're always going to look first 
at factoring, and if we can't factor, and it's a quadratic, has to be a quadratic, x squared. If we cannot factor, and it's a quadratic, then we can use the quadratic formula. So let's do that with our quadratic here. See if we can factor it. Now, typically, if we were going to be factoring, it's because we're setting it equal, equal to zero. And that's my, my note here, is that uh, the x-intercept is when y is equal to zero. So that, that's this note here. The x-intercept is when y is equal to zero. So that's very typically what we're going to be doing when we're factoring. We're going to be setting equal to zero. So let's go ahead and see if we can factor this. All right, and what do we have? We're going to have some combination of 1 and 6. So it could be 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. Uh, it's a minus and a minus. So I can go plus or minus up here. Uh, so I, I'm going to be able to go plus minus, or I'm going to be able to go minus plus. And then I can do all the combinations of 1 and 6. And that doesn't look good. I'm looking at, I'm looking at 18 and 1. So that's not going to get us anywhere. And then I'm looking at 6 and 1. And that's getting us a, a 3 and a 6. So that's not going to get us to 12. Because we want to get to 12, right? We want the outside and inside to give us a minus 12x. So that eliminates the 1 and the 6, and then the 2 and the 3. I'm going to go 2, 3. That gives us 9 and 2, which is 11. Not quite. And then if I go 3, 2, that gives us a 6 and a 3, which is 9. All right, so this is not factorable. All right, cannot factor. And what does that do for us back here? That, that eliminates this, and that brings us up to using the quadratic formula. So let's take a look there. And say that, uh, so what are we looking for? We say we're looking for the x-intercept here. I guess I could have said that up above. And uh, say x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And in this, at this phase, in a pre-calculus class at least, you have probably been using this if you've been doing some work with complex numbers. I'm not going to go through the process of simplifying this. Uh, I'll, go ahead and simplif I'll go ahead and simplify it without using the process. And then and if you want to pause and check your work and, and see if you're simplifying it the same way I am, you, you could go ahead and do that. So there I'm getting uh, negative 2 plus or minus rad 2. And maybe you got that as well. Okay, let's look at the other form. Remember I said there are two forms here, right? And we've done everything now, right? We've done the x-intercept, quadratic formula, and uh, that includes this, zero is the roots factor. So We've done everything. Now we're going to do everything for the other uh, form, for this form. y minus k equals a, x minus h squared. So here is an equation in that form. And we don't, for the vertex, we don't need to do anything or remember anything really um, special as far as the vertex goes because what we can really think about is the shift here, right? And this is something that a pre-calculus student would have done recently, is looked at the shift. So this is a parabola, x squared, that has been shifted how? What does that plus 2 do? That shifts it two units to the left. And what does this plus 6 do? That shifts it two units up. So there it is. The vertex is negative 2, 6, based upon the shift, if it's in this form. Axis of symmetry, as before. 
is going to be whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is. So that's x equals negative 2 here. And uh, the x intercept is going to be, we're going to go, uh, we're going to have to expand this. So I would have negative 3 x plus 2 squared plus 6 equals 0. And then I would need to expand this like so. That'd be negative 3x squared minus 12x. And then minus 12 plus 6 is minus 6. And if you haven't noticed already, this is the same quadratic that we had on the other in the other form. I just changed its form. So this, you would recognize this from the previous page right there. And we would go through the same process of trying to factor. And then when we can't factor, we would use the quadratic formula. So this is a look at these aspects of a quadratic vertex x-intercept, which is also the zeros, roots, factors, and the axis of symmetry. And with those questions, you should be able to do just about anything that you want to with quadratic, including, like I say, solving an equation for zero, graphing, solving a word problem.